In this module, we will look at the role of boundary layers in convective heat transfer. As uh, you would have noticed in the module on the overview of convective heat transfer, that in contrast to heat conduction, where the material being heated does not move, in uh, convective heat transfer, the material actually moves. Convection occurs in fluids, that is liquids and gases. So let us look at this hot metal plate surrounded by air. At the surface of this plate, as air comes into contact with the hot plate, air will heat and due to buoyancy it will rise. Thus there will be formation of a natural current of air. Now if we put a fan next to the hot plate, Again, you will forcibly move the air over the heated plate's surface. And the heat transfer due to convection will involve forced movement of air. Heat transfer due to convection is complicated because of the movement of the fluid that is being heated or cooled, which can be quite chaotic. To get a uh, mechanistic understanding of convective heat transfer, Let's examine convective heat transfer in a fluid flowing inside a pipe. Recall from your study of fluid flow in a pipe, we know that the fluid that is in contact with the pipe surface is actually sticking to it and it is stationary. But the very next layer will be moving at a low velocity and so on. This helps create a boundary layer that is influenced by the viscosity of the fluid. For laminar flow conditions, when uh, recall that Reynolds number is less than 2100, we get a parabolic velocity profile in the pipe. Note that the length of the arrows tell us something about the velocity magnitude. At the center line, the velocity is the highest. Uh, that's where the length is the maximum for the arrow. And then it decreases to zero uh, along the inside surface of the pipe. We call this the hydrodynamic boundary layer. Similar to the velocity profile, we also get a temperature profile in the fluid when we have the pipe surface at a temperature different than the temperature of the fluid that is flowing through it. So let's see how we can get a temperature profile. Let's assume that the inside pipe surface is at a constant temperature Ts and the fluid is entering at a temperature lower than Ts, let's call it Ti. If the temperature is constant at the entry, then we can show the temperature profile by keeping all the lengths of the arrows the same. Now, as the fluid moves inside this pipe, heat is going to transfer from the pipe surface into the fluid. Now, as the fluid begins to move inside the pipe, the temperature of the fluid in contact with the surface will quickly rise to Ts, but the layers away from the surface will still have the temperature closer to the initial temperature. As the fluid moves further along the pipe and more heat is transferred from the pipe surface into the fluid, then the temperature profile will begin to take shape. Again, noting that the center line temperature will be lower than the temperature of the fluid in contact with the pipe surface. Thus, the thermal boundary layer will extend all the way to the interior of the pipe. So to recap, when heat is transferring into a fluid flowing in a pipe, we have two boundary layers, a hydrodynamic boundary layer and a thermal boundary layer. We are interested in rate of heat transfer from the pipe into the fluid. 
and this requires mathematical description of both these layers which is rather complicated and beyond the scope here but there is another method to solve for the rate of heat transfer this involves an empirical approach and lots of experiments now fortunately we do not have to do the, all those experiments those experiments in most cases have already been done by other researchers we just need to learn how to use the results of those experiments for our use so that we can calculate rate of convective heat transfer from a solid surface into a fluid.